I should put a little qualifier, traveling solution. to the wave equation. Um, because sometimes you can get shapes that looks like nothing is really traveling. Um, let me uh, do, that, uh, do this with a demo here. So once again, we are describing wave, or um, still we are describing wave. Nothing's really changed. But um, what I want to, so this, is, this will be the setup for what we'll spend a lot more time tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Tuesday. So you've seen the wave where it looks like something's traveling from one point to the other. You know, I shake it and something looks like it's traveling over there, comes back and so on. And um, as we deal with the wave, you will see description of wave where it looks like nothing is traveling. Uh, this is an example of a wave where nothing is traveling, right? It looks like nothing is, I mean, this something is oscillating up and down but it doesn't look like anything is moving across space. Let me give you one more example. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, I did it too fast. Okay. Uh, okay. This is another example along the same line. Something is oscillating up and down, and it even looks wavy. It looks like a sine shape, right? Um, but it doesn't look like anything is really traveling. And uh, let me just uh, do, do the one more example in this sequence. If I shake it a little bit faster, oops, um, I have to be careful here. If I shake it a little, this is really in the way. No, no, no I'm not doing it right. Yeah, the last one is usually the hardest. Uh, well, it's not the, actually the last one, but it's the last one I've been able to do ever. Um, so. No, no. Okay, I need to get this right. Um, no, that's too slow. Oh. Uh, I think it might be easier if I'm a little bit farther out. No, it was there briefly. I'll do this in simulation when we are talking about this uh, <laughs> on Tuesday. So these, these are examples of what we call standing wave. And when you look at standing wave, it won't actually look like this. You won't see this shape in the standing wave. It's because uh, standing wave is a combination of more than one wave. Standing wave is a combination of two traveling waves. So I can, so, so um, it would be something that looks like this. I have a fixed end there. And if I put a pulse here, so, So you know, when you look at this wave, so this doesn't travel in one direction forever, right? Like what you, saw here, what you see here, this wave, it's not traveling in one direction forever. It's a kind of bouncing back and forth. So, um, so this also cannot be described by this alone because the, so you know, for a period of time, it can be described with something that has minus Vt. And then for another period of time, it'll, have be, it'll be described something that is uh, plus of it moving to left. And then so for some period of time, it's moving to right. So uh, let's see, I'm trying to see what I can cover now. So this is the sense that I want you to have. Um, so, so when we are trying to describe this wave, uh, we can at least to do this. We can sort of try to do it piecewise. We can try to do it, all right, so while for the time, period of time from zero to some time t1, it's uh, described by h1 is equal to some you know, shape x minus vt for um, t from t from uh, 0 to some time t1, right? And we could say uh, for this time, from t1 to t2, that it's the, essentially the same shape, but with the uh, opposite sign for velocity. We could say h2 is minus g x plus vt for time in uh, t1 and to t2, right? 
So I want to ask you this question. How would you describe the wave if I uh, put in two different waves in this same space at the same time while this wave is coming to the left if there's another wave moving to the right? What would happen as they overlap? Let me, okay. So these two waves, so up to this point, you could say, all right, to the left of this point, I'm going to use H1. To the right of this point, I'm going to use H2. What happens as they two begin to overlap? So at some point, this wave is going to move over to here. At some point, this wave is going to move over to here. And um, the position of B, it can only have one position. So the shape of this string is still going to be determined by a function, where if you put in the position of the bit, you know what, at what height it should be. How would you determine where the bit should be? One wave says, so look at this green bit, for example. One wave says it must be here. And the other wave says, well, it's going to be here. How do you make a choice? Um, you will be able to find the moment in time where it'll be a, a flat line. We'll be able to find the moment and I'll show that to you. But I want to uh, have you guys give me a way to, so this is what I'm trying to describe. I want to be able to describe the total, um, so kind of H total, as in what is the shape of the wave um, as these two overlap. And I want to be able to describe this in terms of these two, H1 and H2, because it makes sense that uh, as they overlap, what individual components of wave was will be important. So how do you think these two will combine? So the way they combine, uh, for the medium where this description applies, is actually very simple. Simply H1 plus H2. You simply add them. And because it's such a simple relationship, we actually give it a complicated name. This is what we call superposition principle. I think I might have mentioned this uh, once. Uh, maybe in the context of calculating rotational inertia. It's the idea that you have, well, you have one source of influence, you have another source of influence, and their combined influence, it's a simple sum. It's a simple sum. Uh, it doesn't do anything complicated. And when you have that, what you get is that it's, um, so this is a result of these two waves actually not interacting with each other. So watch what happens when I uh, let time flow. Now, this is moving to the right, this is moving to left, right? If this wave this didn't exist at all, would this still be moving to right? Right? So what you're seeing here is that when these two waves overlapped, they did nothing to each other. This wave uh, didn't get um, affected at all by this other wave. While they were overlapping, you had to add this to figure out the one position of the bit. But as long as, the, as soon as they are not overlapping, they sort of move on as though nothing had happened. So let me actually make this pulse uh, shorter. So uh, let me try this with a loose end. So um, that gives a more fun shapes. So. When you look at this, you see that as they overlap, if the influences are going in the same direction, they will overlap. You can find the moment in time where it's exactly double the height because it's a double the uh, single wave. Now, they are going to come together in a way that they are opposing each other. You can find the moment in time where they overlap in that exact way so that it is a flat line but for only a single moment in time. It's flat line, but only for a single moment in time. But while I have this picture, let me ask you this question. So while these two overlap to a flat line, is the wave gone then? Like there's no more wave? 
Like you've seen it, right? You see that uh, the waves are going to re-emerge. So how? It's a flat line. There's no, where's my energy? It's all in the kinetic energy. These beads, even though they are at the zero, position of zero potential energy, they are moving up, moving down. That's why in the next moment, you are going to see the waves re-emerge. So, so we are going to be using this uh, superposition principle on Tuesday to describe a range of wave phenomena, a wave of wave interference. Uh, the single most important one is what we call uh, standing wave. That will be subject of your uh, lab on Tuesday. And I want to have, uh, I hope to have enough time to talk about something called the beat. Beat is what happens when you have two waves overlapping or two oscillations overlapping, like with this one, where the oscillations have different frequency. And uh, I'll be able to illustrate that more easily with the sound waves, so we'll do that.